thank you very much. Let me say good morning to all of you. And I want in a special way to recognize the president of Duquesne University of the Holy Spirit, Professor Ken Gormley, Dr. Gerald Boudou, Francis Philbin, Endowed Director of the Center for African Studies, Reverend Fathers of the Congregation of the Holy Spirit, my friend and colleague, Honorable Joseph Isaac, Minister in the Government of Dominica, my dear wife, Melissa, who is here with me today, Ambassador Steve Farrell, Secretary to the Cabinet of Dominica, Honorable Barbara Daly, Consul General of Dominica in New York, Administrators and members of the Integrity of Creation Committee, Mrs. Missy Henderson, Director of Public Affairs in the Office of the Prime Minister of Dominica, distinguished faculty, students, and guests of the university, specially invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, friends all. It is my great pleasure and honor to be associated with this institution not only as a devout Catholic, but also to be considered worthy to become an alumnus of this illustrious Duquesne University, which incidentally is the only spiritan institution of higher education Pennsylvania that has received the Environmental Protection Agency's EPA's Energy Star Combined Heat and Power Award for its natural gas turbine located on campus. Duquesne University has steadfastly shown its commitment to protecting our fragile environment with its continued support of environmentally friendly initiatives such as its innovative ice cooling systems, which cools buildings and reduces peak energy demand, to identify but two of its many initiatives at protecting the ozone and reducing greenhouse effect. It pleases me that in recognizing this, the university is also giving high regard to environmental conservation through Duquesne's Center for Environmental Research Education, which offers undergraduate and graduate degrees in environmental science and management, along with the specialized MBA with a focus on sustainability. The biodiversity of our environment is our duly responsibility. It has provided our sustenance through the centuries and must therefore be preserved and maintained, not only for our posterity, but for that of future generations. And therefore, on this occasion, I want to say a heartfelt thank you to all of you at Duquesne University for doing your part to ensure that humanity has a fighting chance of survival. Ladies and gentlemen, friends, I speak to you today not as a harbinger of bad news or a cynic, but as someone who has experienced firsthand the devastatingly cruel and merciless effects of climate change and global warming. More and more, experts are warning of the danger of losing our planet as weather patterns change and shift.
For those who may view my island home, the Commonwealth of Dominica as located in a region thousands of miles away and therefore somewhat removed, I invite you to join me in recounting here in the United States of America the wrath of Category 4 Hurricane Harvey as it ravaged Texas in August of 2017. Living in its path, 106 confirmed deaths and damage estimated at US $125 billion. This placed it among the costliest natural disasters ever in the United States, comparable to Hurricane Katrina of 2005. Just last week, Hurricane Michael, another Category 4 hurricane, devastated beyond recognition areas of Florida and an already fragile coast of the Carolinas, with a death toll as of sun Saturday from the monstrous storm having risen to 18, according to Reuters and the New York Times. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it, it has therefore become painfully obvious that such disasters are no longer relegated to the islands of the Caribbean or Pacific region, and that we are all susceptible to the intensity of these calamitous occurrences, whether they be in the form of wind and rain, or earthquakes and other formerly natural phenomena. When Category 5 Hurricane Maria made landfall in Dominica on September 17, 2018, it felt like all the demons from all over the world had gathered up and flung at us at 175 miles per hour. Maria followed closely on the heels of Irma, one of the biggest hurricanes to make landfall on record in the Caribbean. In the space of just two weeks, two Category 5 hurricanes, a more than once in a thousand years event, shook the world into confronting our planet's changing climate like no disaster had done before. For many years, those of us warning about floods and droughts, of rising sea levels and submerging countries, felt like we were shouting alone in the dark. After Maria and Irma, climate change was thrust out of the shadows, into the light, away from theoretical construct, into lived reality, pulled from distant future, straight into the present. We must not let this moment slip away. We must not let those memories slip into the night. Leading scientific experts explain that the scale of this disaster was a direct result of the warming of the Atlantic Ocean. Hurricanes and tropical storms pick up more water than before as they cross the Atlantic, which in turn, they drop with devastating consequences when they make landfall. Dominica has witnessed a dramatic escalation of storm damage in recent years. The recently released report of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, IPCC, recorded that, and I quote, climate-related risk to health livelihoods, food security, water supply, human security, and economic growth are expected to increase with global warming, and that any such increase is projected to affect human health with primarily negative consequences." End of quote. A few days after Maria struck, the government of the Commonwealth of Dominica declared its intention to be the first climate resilient nation in the world. Some observers may say that we have overreached ourselves, that Dominica's intention to be the world's first climate resilient nation is overly ambitious. We beg to differ. We believe, my dear brothers and sisters, that there are no alternatives. 
Dominica's vision is an integrated set of specific, practical, time-bound targets that we believe are achievable with resources that have been committed. As explained in the IPCC report, climate change impact, climate change impact and responses are closely linked to sustainable development, which balances social well-being, economic prosperity, and environmental protection. That principle was adopted in 2015 by the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, SDGs, to, and I quote, provide an established framework for assessing the links between global warming and development goals that include poverty eradication, reducing inequalities, and climate action, end of quote. Dominica is a natural candidate to demonstrate that a new, more sustainable development trajectory can be achieved. We are small enough that climate resiliency is within our reach in a relatively short period of time. Larger countries would find this much harder to achieve. Yet, Dominica is also a sovereign democratic nation with all the complications, advantages, and challenges that brings. Rearranging entire systems of education and health to support resiliency is complex. Reorganizing systems of ports, bridges, and roads is expensive. Resetting the relationship between private and public sectors has wider implications. Employing the rule of law and maintaining social order must be carefully done. Transforming decade, decades old ways of doing things by consensus through complex coordination with transparency and sensitivity to all stakeholders is not easy. But we cannot evacuate everyone and abandon ship in the event of the next catastrophe. So resilient, my dear brothers and sisters, we must become. We believe that building a resilient nation is about more than just strengthening systems and climate-proofing public infrastructure. It will call for us to adopt a particular moral character. A resilient nation embraces full respect for the needs of all its citizens and communities, economic, social, political, and spiritual. Our challenge, therefore, is not simply one of physical renewal, but of social regeneration. We are minded we're reminded by the IPCC report that international cooperation is a critical enabler for developing countries and vulnerable regions to strengthen the action for the implementation of climate responses, including through enhancing access to finance and technology and enhancing domestic capacities to take into account national and local circumstances and needs. Hence, it continued. Adaptation and mitigation options to global warming implemented in a participatory and integrated manner can enable rapid systemic transitions in urban, urban and rural areas, and that these are most effective when aligned with economic and sustainable development, and when local and regional governments and decision makers are supported. In this regard, the international community has been inspired by Dominica's goal and the conviction of its leadership. It has so far been supportive of our efforts to deliver on this vision and the example that Dominica can potentially set for the rest of the world. We believe that what has so far been pledged, if those pledges are honored within the time frame set, in combination with our own limited national resources, it is possible for Dominica to be meaningfully climate resilient in five years. Today, I submit to you 
that it is only with this type of global cooperation and perspective that we as a world and humanity as a whole will tackle climate change efficiently and effectively. In this regard, there is no time to wait. We are committed to follow our well thought out plan, which will soon be ratified by the government. To be clear, ladies and gentlemen, sisters and brothers, striving for a climate resilient nation is an overarching approach to national development, which makes society and the economy sustainable, protects our natural and built environments, and generates inclusive growth that, as far as it is humanly possible to ensure, is not altered, reversed, or undone by climate change. We recognize that the loss and damage as a percentage of GDP from extreme climate events are correlated with levels of economic development and equality. We witness this correlation in the Caribbean through the markedly different effects the same climatic events had on neighboring countries with different levels of development. Cayman Islands versus Grenada following Hurricane Ivan in 2004 or Puerto Rico versus Florida following the 2017 hurricane season. A blueprint for achieving climate resilience cannot be independent of a plan for long-term socio-economic development. Our plan is based on our lived experience. We reviewed each of Dominica's actions in the aftermath of Hurricane Maria. In developing this plan, we posed the question, what would Dominica have had to have in place before a climate disaster to ensure that they would not have to repeat that action next time around? We recognize that there is a danger in fighting the last fire. The next clim climate-related disaster may be different. Consequently, the result of this exercise was to identify the broad characteristics of a disaster-resilient nation with the practical objectives that would allow those characteristics to be achieved within five years and within a budget. The first objective of resilience is that citizens must have early resumption of essential services, such as electricity, water, telecommunications, health, security, access to food and payments. On the grounding utility lines in built up areas is one example of what can be done to help achieve this goal. Those who cannot be reconnected quickly will be encouraged and helped to live at a higher level of self-sufficiency. The second objective is that during a climate disaster, all citizens must have safer shelter. And in the aftermath of the disaster, all citizens must have access to essential supplies of food, water, energy, and medicines for the length of time it will take before ready supplies are available once more. More public shelters, better built private homes, public and private food and medicine stores, and backup energy will contribute to achieving this objective. No one can be left behind and no one should be left behind. Every human being matters and is deserving of dignity and an acceptable form of shelter. The third objective is that the flow of national income does not hit a sudden stop after a natural disaster. One example of this is our ongoing efforts in geothermal development that allows for exporting geothermally generated electricity on the sea to Guadeloupe and Martinique with a hurricane clause that pays out a higher income when a natural disaster has hit Dominica is one example of how we might begin to achieve this objective. Others include the greater export of individual professional services, down a resilient high-speed internet connection, and more resilient agriculture and tourism. 
these three objectives of our plan will be able to function independently of each other, but will also draw strength from each other. Our approach is to inculcate resilience at the household, community, spiritual, and national levels. There is a need for overarching frameworks for the role of the law in climate resiliency, the roles of institutions, the roles of national disaster protocols, the relationship between public and private sectors before, during, and after a disaster, and the importance of national conversations, engagement, and consultation. We believe that when the final reckoning comes, the master counter will look past our mask and add up what we did, not what we said. What efforts we made to bring sanctuary to our neighbor and what efforts we have all made to end climate change globally. I reiterate today that climate change is no longer an abstract euphemism pertaining only to small islands in the Caribbean or Pacific regions. Events of this past 36 months have brought this home forcibly to us all. Every single one of us has a stake and must therefore raise a voice in the promotion of the concept of reducing exposure to such. I ask this morning that you too clear your throats and let your voices be heard on climate change. We call on you to join us in this journey to build a climate resilient future. Let us march towards the sunlit uplands together, hand in hand, shoulder to shoulder. Again, I am humbled by your inviting me here today, Mr. President. I invoke God's continued blessings on this institution and all associated with its wonderful work here in Pennsylvania and the world over. You have done a remarkable job at helping to make Mother Earth a better place for all mankind. May God bless this great country, the United States of America. May God bless your university. May God bless my country, Dominica, and its citizens. I thank you very much.